So this tutorial is about simplifying factorial expressions. Uh, so you've maybe had a look at uh, what factorial operations are. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some questions up and I'm going to get you to pause the video if you haven't already attempted them. Try them yourself um, and then you can watch me do the solutions and see if you can compare your answers to mine. So these first four are simplifying these numerical uh, expressions, fractions involving factorials. The challenge is do them without a calculator. Okay, on you go. Okay, so uh, what we're trying to do is mainly trying to uh, use a simplifying process on factorials. So in question one here, uh, we've got the idea of uh, 8 factorial divided by 5 uh, factorial. So we're trying to get to the basis of getting a common factor of some factorial. So we know that 8 factorial can be written as uh, 8 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 6. And we could, ex we could write it all the way down to times 1. But if you notice that it would be sufficient in this case here to write it as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Why? Uh, because we've actually got a denominator which is also 5 factorial. And therefore, if we simply write that as uh, over 5 factorial, then we have a common factor in the numerator and denominator of 5 factorial. So what we're trying to do in each one is to take the larger factorial number and unpack it, or kind of deconstruct it so that part of the multiplication process is that smaller factorial. So 8 factorial or 5 factorial could be written as this. We can divide through by 5 factorial, so they go to 1, which leaves us with the calculation 8 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 6 over 1. Okay, So 8 times 7 is 56, and 56 multiplied by 6 would be, what's that, 300. And 36. Okay, so that's how we do these kind of things here. Num number two, let's bring it down. Uh, zero factorial divided by four factorial. Well, that's not so much a simplification as just using a little bit of knowledge. Zero factorial is one and always will be. Four factorial is four multiplied by three multiplied by 2. You can add the multiply by 1 if you want. There's not much point to it there. Uh, and therefore, there's no simplifying we can do. It was simply to remind you that we can use 0 factorial in expressions. It's not very common. And 4 multiplied by 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. So the answer is 1 over 24. Okay, uh, that's number 2. Uh, number 3, we can do this one in the same way as we did number 1. So let's have a look at this one. Um, in number one, we unpack the numerator here because 8 factorial is larger than 5 factorial. If you notice in number three uh, that 5 factorial is greater than 3, so we're going to leave 3 factorial as it is because it's the smaller of the two. And what we're then going to do is to uh, draw a fraction line and I'm going to decompose the uh, 5 5 factorial, and I'm going to start with 5, of course, multiply by the next number down, and keep going until I get to, in this case, 3, well, because it's times 3, times 2, times 1, in other words, times 3 factorial, and we can call a halt there because it's got a matching factorial. We can divide through by 3 factorial, and we're left with a numerator of 1 and a denominator of 20. So our answer there is 1 20th. Hopefully you got that. Okay, and the last one is uh, number four. I'll put this down here. 37 uh, factorial over 33 factorial. Let's throw that in just for a bit of fun because I know uh, that you like a challenge. Uh, so let's see uh, about, get a wee bit of extra uh, room going on here. Okay, so I, what we're doing here? Well, again, we're looking for larger or smaller factorials. So it's quite clear that 37 factorial is the largest one. We've got a 33 factorial in the denominator. So I'm going to write out 37 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 35 multiplied by 34 multiplied by 33 factorial. I'm going to stop there because it matches up with the largest factorial 
in the denominator. I know that I can cancel that out. So I've got 33 factorial multiplied by 4 factorial. Well, there isn't a 4 factorial to, uh, to cancel with, but what I can do is I can consider the individual elements of 4 factorial. I'm not going to do multiplied by 1, but that's me effectively. I've, I've kind of slightly factorized it uh, by splitting up into different bits, as you can see. Let's change the colors because there's a few bits of simplifying we're going to do. So we can simp we've got a common factor of 33 factorial, so they divide through to 1. Um, and as you can see here, we've got a denominator with a 4, 3, and a 2. And the best thing to do would be to try and simplify some of these larger numbers. So for instance, I'm going to divide through by 4 and I make the 4 and the 36, 1 and 9. Uh, I've got a 3 here. Now, I don't have uh, none of the other numbers are multiples of 3, but notice the 9 is. So I'm going to divide through by 3, which leaves me with that makes it a 3. And the 2, I can divide through, I suppose, is 34 to give us uh, 17 and 1. So if you notice, my denominator is now just 1. And I'm left with the fairly straightforward calculation. 37 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 35 and multiplied by 17. Okay? Um, well, you could do that. Let's just do it quickly. Um, is there any particular way that would be good to do it? Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> that there would. Let's do 37 by 35. 37 multiplied by 35. That would give us 35. Uh, that gives us 185. Uh, multiply through by 3. Gives me 21. And 3 is a 9. Plus the 2 is 11. And that gives me 5, 9, 2, 1. If I add them together. So 1,295. And that's me multiply these two numbers together. And 3 times 17 is 51, so we could just do that. 1, 2, 9, 5, multiplied by how much? 51. Uh, it gives us, of course, a 1, 2, 9, 5, multiplied through by 1, multiplied through by 50, and we get 25. 5 nines are 45, 47, 2 fives are 10 plus 14, and then we've got 6 here. I'm going to put a wee line in for just basic multiplication. Always good to be able to do. Add them together. 5, I get 14, 10, 6, and 6. So our answer there is 66,045. So I get a hero award for getting that without a calculator. So well done if you got that too. Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, uh, next set of questions. So here we're introducing some algebra. Uh, simplify these e um, expressions. So again, if you haven't tried them, pause the video, try them, and then you can follow my solutions. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at uh, what our solutions might be. N factorial divided by N. Well, this is interesting because uh, We've, we haven't got a factorial in the, in the denominator, but we can remember that n factorial is n multiplied by the next number down, which is n minus 1 factorial, because that just goes down and down, uh, down to 1. We're assuming that 1 is a lower value than all of that. So we can split up n factorial into n multiplied by the next number down, just in the same way that we would say that 8 factorial is the same as 8 multiplied by 7 factorial. That's the same idea here. Okay, So don't be put off by the n's. Uh, what we've then got, of course, is that we've got a denominator of n, which means we've got a common factor of n, which leaves us just with n minus 1 factorial. Okay, That's a simplified expression. Uh, number 6, we've got 3n factorial over 3n minus 2 factorial. Now again, this is quite similar to the numerical ones because um, we've got 3n and then we've got this number here in the denominator is 2 less than that. So what we can say, that's obviously the smaller number, so again, we're going to deconstruct the larger number, which is 3n factorial. So the first number is 3n, and then they multiply by the next number down, 
which is not 2n, of course, but it's just 3n minus 1. So don't be put off by the coefficient in front of the n. And then we can keep going down. The next number down is 3n minus 2. And look, 3n minus 2 is the same as 3n minus 2 factorial here. So we can add in our factorial to say and so on. Uh, we can then draw our line and then we can start to introduce our numerator which is just 3n minus 2 factorial. We can divide through by 3n minus 2 factorial which leaves us with, uh, what have we got, just 3n multiplied by 3n minus 1. Okay, or if you wanted to multiply that out, which you don't need to, it's the same answer. You get 9n squared minus 3n. So either of those two would be absolutely fine as answer. It's good. And number 7, same idea. Uh, it's just about familiarity with uh, these different algebraic expressions and being able to recognise what's going on. In other words, if you notice n plus 1 as a number is actually 2 more than n minus 1 as a number. For instance, if n was 5, we would have 6 factorial over 4 factorial. So there's a difference of 2 between these numbers. It's really important for you to just get familiar with that idea and not be put off by the algebra involved. So n, min n plus 1 is the larger of the two. So I'm going to deconstruct that into n plus 1 multiplied by the next number down, which is just n, multiplied by the next number down, which is n minus 1, which is the same as this number here. So I can add the factorial in and then just put n minus 1 factorial as my denominator. So it's very similar to the one we just did there. It looks a wee bit different, but same idea. And then what have we got? We can divide through by n minus 1 factorial, which leaves us with just n plus 1 multiplied by n. I'll write the n first. Or n squared plus n. Either of those is absolutely fine. So that's us simplified these uh, fractions using uh, our techniques. And the last one, uh, again, I'll bring it up here. It's uh, n, a little bit more going on here. n factorial times n plus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. Okay. So, various ways to do this. I, I tend to, let me just bring the page up a little bit. Okay. What I tend to do when I'm solving these, is when there's more than one factorial, I tend to kind of split them up into pairs, one numerator and a, kinda, and a denominator. So there's it doesn't really matter which, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the first pair of numbers here, and then I'm going to also match up the second pair. And you could treat them as two separate fractions, just like we did in questions uh, seven, 6 and 7. But, of course, it is part of the one expression. So what I'm going to do, I'll just put my y line. Oops, let's not do that. Uh, I'll draw my line. Uh, I've got my line too. Out. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? So n factorial divided by n minus 1. Well, which is the bigger number? Uh, n factorial is larger, so that means I get to split that up. So I start at n and keep going down until I get to the lower number n minus 1, which doesn't, of course, take long because it's the very next number down. So there's my new arrangement for the first pair. Do you see that? I haven't simplified it, I've just split it up, and I can do the same with my second pair. I've got n plus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial, which actually is exactly the, the question that we just did in question 7. So even though I kind of know what's going on, I, I'll repeat that. So I'm saying n plus 1 is a larger number, so I'm starting at n plus 1 multiplied by the next number down until I get to the next oh, n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so I'll just extend that wee line like that. So here I've got, if you can see, uh, I'm not going to put the highlighters in, but I'll just kind of um, break it in two. That's basically me got the first half, the yellow one, and then the green one. 
Okay, so I can go ahead and find common factors because they're all multiplying. N minus one factorial is a common factor of the whole numerator. Divide through by that, I've got one and one. In the second pair, I can see N minus one factorial is a common factor of both numerator and denominator. So my denominator goes to one, and if I look at what's left, I've got an N here, multiplied by N plus one, multiplied by N. So we've got basically, N, I'll just write it out in full like that, which can be simplified to n squared over n plus 1 or n cubed plus n squared, whichever way you want to write it. Both of them are fine. Okay, a wee bit more involved, uh, but we can take steps to simplify the even the simplifying process, if you know what I mean. Okay, last couple of questions. Again, uh, try them yourself, pause the video, and then watch my solutions. Okay, so we've got equations going on here, but if you notice, most importantly, on the left-hand side, we've got uh, factorial expressions that we can simplify. So if having just done uh, all these other ones, hopefully that should come quite quickly. We're just going to keep the equation part in. So n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial. n plus 1 is the larger one, so that's the one we're going to split up. n plus 1 multiplied by the next one down is n, and we can stop there because that is actually our denominator, it's n factorial. This time equals six. Uh, we can divide through by n factorial. That goes to one and one, and a simplified expression says n plus one equals six. Subtract one from both sides, n equals five. There we go. That's the way we've which we solve these equations. And the second one here, I'm not going to write it out again, but we could say n plus two factorial over n factorial, that's uh, the numerator is two times two, uh, a value of two more than the denominator. So I've got n plus two, uh, and then multiply by n plus one, which is the next one down, multiply by the next one down, which is n, which is also our denominator. So we can stop that there, divided through by n factorial equals 42. And what we're going to do, we're going to divide through by n factorial, leaving us with n plus 2 times n plus 1 is equal to 42. We're not quite there, of course, although it's factorized, we don't have equal 0, it's not a proper quadratic equation, so we have to multiply it out, n squared plus 3n plus 2 equals 42, subtract 42 from both sides, or whatever way in which you solve these, that leaves me with minus 40 equals 0. Now we can factorise it again. Hopefully it will factorise fairly evenly. We've got uh, 1n squared, so we can just go with factors of negative 40 uh, that, mul that add together to 3. Factors of negative 40, that would be negative 8 and positive 5. No, it won't be. It'll be positive 8 and negative 5. That adds up to positive 3. So I've got n plus 8 and n minus 5 equals 0. So either n plus 8 equals 0 or n minus 5 equals 0. So our two solutions that we're generating are n equals negative 8 or n equals 5. Now there's a little interesting final twist here because you would think they both work except that the whole premise of factorial operations are that n should be positive uh, because we only deal, factorials deal with positive integers. So we can't have a negative 8 because then uh, how does that work? 1 less than negative 8 is negative 9 times negative 10. It doesn't go down, descend to 1. Okay, So just remember that our solutions can only be positive. So we can say of n equals negative 8, uh, not valid as n has to be greater or equal to 1, okay? Uh, and therefore, the solution is n equals 5. There we go. So there's some solutions. Hopefully that that was helpful um, and that you can get a wee bit more confident in your factorial simplifying.